Hello and welcome to our broadcast of Beyond the Shackles. My name is Chaplain Yvonka Fairby, your host for the show. If you watched our show in the past, you know that we address all things dealing with the incarcerated, disenfranchised, and their families. But we don't stop there because we know that you do not have to be behind physical bars to be in shackles in your heart and your mind. But I will tell you this, here on Beyond the Shackles and at the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, we believe by the blood of Jesus, all can be set free. And that brings us to our show that we have today with our guest. We have a great guest for you today. His name is Reverend Gregory Ray. And I want to tell you a little bit about him and what it means to, to rise up from adversity. Because we're going to talk about today how you can find purpose in the adversity in your life. And Gregory Ray began his career in financial services in 1990, promoting quickly to the position of regional real estate manager in charge of overseeing growing and selling IIT's Western Region's multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. Building on his success at ITT Financial, Mr. Ray became an entrepreneur, starting a health and fitness club chain with other partners, serving as the director of sales and marketing, responsible for over 100 employees in two states and four locations. After a consist, uh, consistent climb of success in the corporate and entrepreneurial world as a manager of, technology, of a technology firm, partner of a mortgage company, and a licensed financial advisor holding and president of his own real estate and investment firm, where he repositioned over a billion dollars transition, in transitioning financing, the economy took a downturn, along with many of Gregory's professional pursuits. Turning his focus to his present, only present help, Gregory pressed into his relationship with the true and living God to recalibrate his life and leverage everything meant to destroy him, to elevate him to new levels of destiny fulfillment. Today, he is president of Faith Union Corporation, which is dedicated to teaching financial education and providing financial services to all economic statuses, including the unbanked and the underbanked. He is also co-founder and president of the nonprofit organization Takoon Worldwide Charity. It's a wonderful organization, which meets the demand of responding to humanity when faced with disaster. We would like to welcome Reverend Gregory Ray. Thank you, Gregory, for joining us. Thank you for having me. So that was a whole mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. But what I want you to do, if you could, Talk to us about what your life was like before, because we talked about a lot of things that you did, and it was just a, a, a just a snippet. But what was your life like, and when the turn of the economy happened? Tell me some of the things that you went through. Let us let us in on that. Wow, um, you know, I, I for a long time it was real difficult for me to really visit my past. Mm -hmm. um, it was very painful. Yeah. Um, you, know, you you come out and you always by well, you sound so so much better on paper than you can remember it, but it was a lot of years, a lot of hard work, a lot of climbing, a lot of positioning. Those of you that are in corporate America or have had the corporate America experience, mm -hmm. meeting the right people, being in the right meetings. Um, you know, when I was in technology, I traveled over a million miles in eighteen months, so I wow. knew the planes and the and the uh, hotels better than I knew my own home, mm -hmm. um, which is not good for a marriage. And then to to rise from being, you know, a high school athlete and athlete of the year and everybody's saying you're gonna have this great future and to follow those those words and, and continue to work hard and through and climb and get to experience some of the things in life that we all aspire mm -hmm. to, you know, the, the nice European car, the yeah. house in the golf course community, mm -hmm. you know, the you know, the trappings of you know, suits that are very expensive, the mm -hmm. Rolex watch, the, you know, dinners at, and breakfasts at the nicest restaurants that you can imagine. Every um, day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Every day, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're, when, when, when you're making a quarter million dollars a year, it's, life is very different. You know, you, you, you truly, as the words, you want for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, everything is, is right there. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, when you're making $100,000 a year, you don't, you don't want for anything. Yeah. And so for a 10-year span, I never made less than 100 grand. Yeah. Uh, and then at the apex, I made three quarters of a million. Mm -hmm. And so when, 
you have that and you work hard towards that and you put everything into that to literally one day wake up when you're working on uh, those that know me, you know, my firm was was successful in putting $46 million in escrow for the refinance of Neverland Ranch. Mm -hmm. um, and that really set the firm on the map. Okay. After we did that, because people said that that transaction really never could be done uh, because of the nuances of MJJ and, and the people And, and we're evolved. speaking about Michael Jackson's estate, if for those who don't know Neverland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was a key pivotal point in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. It was like the opening and the rise and the fall all at the same time mm -hmm. because it happened in that winter of 08, mm -hmm. um, moving into what was really the winter of 09 and 10 mm -hmm. um, when everything just unraveled. Um, mm -hmm. To work that hard and to aspire and grow through multiple different types of industries and to literally be at a place where you're at the top of your game um, where hedge fund managers are calling you, where people are asking for financing requests in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. Uh, I remember for the Magellan Cruise Liner, I got a call for $900 million. Mm. And what's even probably more interesting than the call is the fact that I had the banks that were going to finance that. Wow. Um, and so when you look at a one to 2% commission on these types of opportunities, you're accelerating into to levels that you know people just dream about. Mm -hmm. um, and here, this is every day. You yeah. walk into the office, you get out of your S class, you grab mm -hmm. your Halliburton briefcase, you, you know, you go in, you have two phones on your, you know, go in and you know, you say good morning, you drop off the Starbucks and the donuts, and you sit at your desk, and then boom, it goes for the next twelve hours. Yeah. And so you don't really think life can do anything different than stay on this trajectory of success until it changes. Until it changes. Mm -hmm. You know until it changes. So talk to us about the change when the economy dropped out, because many of us, you know, experience a lot of loss during that time and devastation. What was life like for you and how did it really shift you and your relationship with the Lord? I was f fortunate on one hand that I was, I was pretty rooted in church. Mm -hmm. um, um, I won't mention the name of the church. It was a very large church in Orange County. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was one of the five main praise and worship leaders. Mm -hmm. um, on any given week, we would have Israel Houghton, we would have Planet Shakers, Matt Redman. And so, you know, I got to meet and worship with these, you know, the, the top of the top of contemporary Christian music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, had one of the most prolific pastors, you know, today still, mm -hmm. uh, one of the top 10 pastors in America mm -hmm. as a pastor. Um, and at that time I was married. And mm -hmm. my my former wife was his photographer, mm -hmm. um, and so you know you're on the end in the in the in the Christian world, and you're on the end in, in the corporate the, world. Yes. You know, so on the outside everything looks like it's going yeah, wonderfully. Absolutely. Um, though we had turmoil in in the home. Yeah. And as the economy started shifting, we had turmoil inside the business too. Mm -hmm. So what was my safe haven? The office started to become devastating and disastrous. So your office was the safe haven, not your home, the office. And yeah. then, so the Lord began to take his hand off of the office. Correct. Okay. And then he took the hand off the worship. Mm. And then it seemingly there was no hand on anything. Yeah. And so now you have to face your life. Yes. And then you start to take away those things that you can hide in the golf and, and the so on and so forth. Yes and the restaurants and, and the familiar car washes and that and the such, the cleaners. I mean, it really came down to, uh, went from a net worth of almost $2 million to owing the IRS $100,000. Oh, and they visited the house. So when you get your own IRS officer, <laughs> I guess you've done something. Good grief. Yeah, yeah you, you, you don't want your own IRS officer, trust me. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, and then have him come and say, after two hours, so you're broke. Wow, okay. You know? Yeah. And to hear that from the IRS and them say, they have they feel for you? Yeah. I mean, I knew they were a changing organization with a little more compassion, but you don't want the IRS to tell you that yeah. you're broke. Yeah. Um, and so that, that really, it sunk in, mm -hmm. you know? And then, you know, I was not the best, being the best husband by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and then that unravels, yeah. right? And I have a five-year-old daughter, that's my life. Mm -hmm. And so 
this, this shift, where do you go? Well, for many people, if you don't know the Lord, you don't have a path. But where do you go when you believe you know the Lord and all these things are happening? I can relate. You, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're saying, God, why? Not just why is this happening to me, mm -hmm. but God, why? Yeah. And let me tell you, if you ask him why, he'll answer you. Yeah. And be ready for the answer. And when you're a person that, that on the outside, your outside world seems so not perfect, but mm -hmm. it's going very well. Mm -hmm. And your faith life looks like it's going very well. Um, but internally, you're in turmoil. He has a way of, of, of coming and giving you time to put things back together. Mm -hmm. So that time period of 12 to about 18 months is everything unraveled, mm -hmm. literally everything unraveled. And I ended up out of my own home. Yeah. Um, it was a, a time for introspection and reflection. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing I could fall back on when I didn't realize that's what I was going to fall back on was the word. Yes. So let's talk about that some because you spoke about so many things right now, um, particularly if you're a believer and you're really going through, you're going through and you're like, what is going on? And the thing is, everything that we experience, it happens because God allows it. And there are reasons he'll allow it. I know even for me, I was serving the Lord when I experienced Lost, not at, at, at high levels like you, but I was in a six figure bracket income and everything unraveled, my marriage unraveled, a lot of parallels. Mm -hmm. But for me, I didn't realize how superficial my relationship was with the Lord. And I didn't find out until the humbling process that occurred with all of those losses came to be. I didn't realize how much I was not allowing. God in because right. I you have the trappings and you have the things where you're not really needing God to the extent that we need to need him in order to fulfill purpose and in order to have a great relationship with him that's not surface. Uh, is there anything that you can relate to that in there? And, and what about your relationship changed from what it was to what it became after the loss? So yes is the short answer. Mm -hmm. um, because I can give long answers sometimes. Mm -hmm. What really changed was, and I use I I'll use I use worship to to explain because that's such a core of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's worship and then there's worship. Wow. Okay. Right. Break, and break that down. So he's worth all of our worship. Mm. And so oftentimes, I mean, we had beautiful, incredible worship experiences. I mean, where everyone, literally a thousand people would be in the presence. People would be laying in the aisles, tears, mm -hmm. people would be hallelujah, hallelujahing and speaking in unknown tongue. I mean, it would just be a saturated atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And yet still you're not in his full presence. Wow. Because to empty yourself out, and to realize that he's worth all mm -hmm. of your worship mm -hmm. is a place where most people don't get. And I used to not understand when people would have these devastating things happen in their life and that would bring them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and my life was pretty non-devastational because yeah. I somehow missed, you know, it, <laughs> bad things happen. Don't get me yeah. wrong. You know, but I mean, it was like whew, quickly, you know, yeah. back on track. Uh -huh. um, you know, kind of looked like a you know stock chart in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and kept climbing. And, um, and then it looked like the, the stock market crash, yeah. you know, of the Great yeah. Recession. Um, you start to, it for me, in worship, the day that I was in the house and, and I was in the living room and I was listening to our former worship leader's album that had come out and there was a song I had sung with him and I was just listening to the words mm -hmm. and the music and then I realized to shakha, which is the word in Hebrew for worship, mm -hmm. which is to lay prostrate. Mm -hmm. It was the first time that I, with nobody around, right? Because sometimes, I mean, call it like it is, sometimes an atmosphere will cause you to do certain things, yeah. you know, and it's not that you're, you're faking or it's not that you're showing off or you're being showy. It's just an atmosphere will cause you it to help, change. It helps out. 
But here I am by myself mm -hmm. in the home. No one's around listening and, and, and singing and tears and, and like we call the ugly snot, all that stuff. And I'm laying on the floor, yeah. prostrate. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized he's worth it all. No matter what you go through, mm -hmm. there's another side to through if you can just empty out and let him have it all. And in worship, that's my desire, is that people come out of themselves and enter in truly the Kadosh of the Kadosh, the Holy of Holies, and forget about what's at home, forget about what's in the office, forget about your kids are in kids club, they're taken care of, forget about the letter that you got, forget about Facebook, Instagram, forget about all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And quiet yourself long enough to walk out of yourself and into his presence. Oh, that's beautiful. And then give him worthship. Yes. Oh. And it's when I got to that place is when I opened the word again. Mm -hmm. And I've been reading the Bible, reading the Bible since I can remember, you know, since I was 13 is probably when I started, I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. And I had studied multiple times and, you know, kind of have this interesting background in, in finding faith, but it changed the way I saw it. And I was with my daughter in what I call the safe zone. Her mother would allow me to take her to Barnes and Noble because mm -hmm. she loved fairy tale books and she would just consume them. She's a speed reader. and a 4.0 plus and all this wonderful stuff. But I was in the inspirational section and I saw this book and I was getting ready to go to law school. So I was looking at the LSAT for dummies and my daughter said, what are you getting ready to do, Poppy? And I said, oh, I'm studying for the LSAT, which is a law is a entry exam. And she said, but you were just gone in a class for nine months, I barely saw you. She said, how long is this going to be? And I said, three years. And she said, I won't see you for three years. Wow. And that hit me so hard because I, I didn't really get to say, I wasn't in the home, so I didn't get to spend that much time with her. And I bathed her and, and carried her on my shoulders and everything since the time she was born. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And I looked down at this book and I opened it up, Ivanka, and we, as Christians would say, it was Greek to me. Mm-hmm. But as a Messianic believer, it was Hebrew to me. Mm -hmm. And I turned it over and I flipped it because Hebrew, you read the opposite mm -hmm. from right to left. And I said, is there something in this book that I'm missing mm -hmm. that could possibly change my life? Wow. And I decided to start all over again. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, scrub me of everything I yes. think I know, mm -hmm. you know, and I came up through Crenshaw Christian Center. I came up through Casey Price. I came up, I mean, a, a most incredible teaching man that I ever knew to that point. And I just said, show me what I'm missing. Show me more. And as we've, you know, matriculated through classes and, yes. you know, we've, we've been at Breath of the Spirit and we've learned well beyond the average of what is taught in, in Christendom, mm -hmm. you know, through Dr. Michelle Corral. Yes. And it's just, then I was going to Shuba Israel with Rabbi Feldman, uh, who was the chairman of the MJAA, the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America, which is the largest mm -hmm. uh, alliance of Messianic Jews outside of Israel. And everything shifted. Mm -hmm. I started to now understand, I, I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't know who Yeshua was. Ah. I knew who Christ was, I thought, but I didn't know who the Mashiach was. Mm -hmm. And when I started to understand not only what he went through, we look at the end when he goes through the persecution, but the preparation for the persecution, yeah. all the studying, all the understanding, yeah. it, they just don't call him rabbi because he was a teacher. He was a rabbi. He was he literally, was a rabbi. he was the rabbi, yes. right? And so you start to walk in his footsteps mm -hmm. and you start to study the way rabbinically that you study and all of a sudden what you thought you knew you realize you don't know anything <laughs> and it is the most humbling you know realization yeah. and so imagine my whole life is 
in turmoil. Yeah. And now, you know, the word, I'm like, I don't even know, you know, what do you mean? You know, what, they, but you know, God gets our attention in that turmoil. Absolutely. And in the devastation and the ruins of life, great purpose can be discovered. Great vision can be rebuilt and erected from those ruins. And that's what Reverend Ray has done. I know I'm experiencing that as well. And you can experience that too. Tell us about your organization, Takoon Charity. And then also tell us how we can get in contact with you. If you want um, Reverend Ray to come to speak, um, if you want to uh, contact him about his organization, let people know also how to contact you. Sir, of course, certainly. Um, you can go to our website at www.tikkun, T-I-K-K-U-N, worldwide.org. Tikkun is the Hebrew word for restore, mm. to repair. Mm -hmm. So reparation is spoken of continuously in scripture. Okay. And it's about rebuilding those ruins. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, the earth was formed and it was void. It was tohu and vovohu, which we don't know in English that that's an indistinguishable ruins. Mm. And it was kosek, which means it was so dark you could see darkness. Wow. And then the Lord, because he is light, yod he vav he, the Hebrew um, tetra tetragrammaton, his Hebrew characters, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? He said the yud, the he, the vav, and the he. We say Yahweh, but we nobody knows how to actually pronounce it. Okay. We just know that it's the yud, the he, the vav, and the he. In, he is light. Mm -hmm. And so when he stepped in, then devastation became a tacoon. It repaired itself. Oh, yes. Then when the ore, the light of the Father, the creator of the universe, illuminated all things, mm -hmm. is when we're able to see all things. And so tacoon worldwide is a charity that the, that the Ruch HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, gave me uh, as a thought, I thought, in November of 2019, so before the pandemic. And I finished up in, at Melodan School of Theology, mm -hmm. where I received my, you know, my master's in theology or the, with the emphasis on uh, Hebrew studies. And I said, now what am I supposed to do, Lord? It was a five-year journey. You know, I was really focused and centered around that and mm -hmm. studying and being part of the ministry. And he said, I want you to birth a charity. And of course, I'm like, charity, nonprofit, that means no money, <laughs> lots of work, right? I'm like, I'm trying to get back on the track where right. I was at before all this happened, right? Tell and, me uh, about it. And then I started studying charities and realized the top 10 are all doing over a billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. And I said, I'm in. Yeah. Um, then the, the, the devastation happened. The, the pandemic began. Um, paperwork got slowed down, so on and so forth. But our first mission, we actually ended up giving... Um, disaster response kits to the Riverside Fire Department. Mm. That was a very, uh, Shackley Cares, which is an amazing organization, sent us $10,000 worth of product to give to them. Okay. First responders. They mm -hmm. wanted to give back to the first responders. Mm -hmm. And then we got our first truckload of food, and then it has just blossomed from there where we've, we've delivered over 500,000 pounds of food, you know, over 200 times to over, you know, 100,000 people. And we are now opening up. And if you follow the website at tacoonworldwide.org, or if you follow my Facebook at Reverend Gregory Ray, R-H-E-A, I post on there some of the missions there, but they're all on the Tacoon Worldwide website, which you can reach me through there. You will see that we've been in Mission Mexico. And we're about to come to South America in a really big way. Oh, that's amazing. We're working on that. We've been to the migrant caravans. We're seeing how the people were taking care of America, our backyard. But as you know, I'm half Panamanian. Mm -hmm. So to see people from Nicaragua and Guatemala and Honduras and the, the countries that are right around my mother and my sisters because they were born in their country mm -hmm. and to not do something is difficult for me because I see my people in them. Yeah. And so we're going to do our part as the Lord leads to help down in Mexico where the migrant caravan has been stopped at the border, of course, mm -hmm. uh, because of 
situations and they're really relying on the goodness and the love of God. Amen. So we want to be the hands and the feet of Yeshua, of Jesus, in showing people in the most devastated points in your life where he showed up in my life, he's going to show up in your life, and he's going to show up in their lives. Mm -hmm. Because if we help one another through the most difficult periods of time in life, then not only will we get through them, but we'll get to a point, hopefully, as we learn and understand the word, where we will pass that on to someone else. And that's the tikkun. That's the repair. That's the restoration. When your life is restored through Messiah Yeshua, through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. restore another's life. Mm -hmm. Because it's that restoration is what changes life and brings everyone together. And I want to end on this scripture Yes. In Philippians, the third chapter, starting in the fourth verse, it says, Through I, my, though I myself might have confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he might depend on the flesh, I far more circumcised in the eighth day in the nation of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the, the Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the Torah, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting Messiah's community as for Torah righteousness and found blameless. In other words, I am the highest of the high. Mm -hmm. But whatever things were gained to me, these I have considered as loss for the sake of Messiah. More than that, I consider all things to be loss in comparison to the surpassing value of the knowledge of Messiah Yeshua, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them garbage in order that I might gain Messiah and be found in him, not having my righteousness derived from Torah, from the Bible, but one that is through trusting in Messiah, the righteousness from God based on trust. Amen. No matter what you go through, no matter what the devastation may be in your life, he will rebuild you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and put you on the path to your destiny and all things will be better than they ever were. And that is a perfect ending to our show. Thank you so much for joining Reverend Gregory Ray and myself on Beyond the Shackles. And remember, by the blood of Jesus, all can be set free. We love you. <laughs>